All TF2 weapons fall on a scale ranging from great to terrible. Crossbow? Great. Southern Hospitality? Meh. Thompson? Sure, the specific placements of all items are subjective, but you can say for sure it would fall in one place in the scale. All except one. The Criticola. The Criticola is Schrodinger's item because no other item in this game is simultaneously criminally overpowered and awful to use. On this scale, it breaks the law of balance as we know them and lands on itself on both sides of the scale. But what makes it so good at being terrible and what makes it terribly good? Well, that's my job to tell you today. Alright, but before I continue guys, it's time to reveal the very first official The What Show sponsor. You know them, you love them, give it up for Raid Shadow Legends. Chances are, you've already heard of Raid, but if not, let me give it a scoop. Raid has over 600 champions, which as we all know, is a lot bigger of a number than 10. Raid also has a lot of bosses to beat the heck out of, including the new Guardian of the Void, Malik Kabar. Outside of sounding like the most evil guy ever, Malik has poison attacks, so if you're not careful, you're gonna get dumped. Make sure you bring a lot of shielding and healing, or else, you know, he's gonna wipe the floor with you. Another cool thing about Raid is the cool cast of characters you got at your disposal. Like Elaine. Okay, maybe not them. Point is, there's a lot of cool characters for you to unlock and level up. And the great thing about Raid is it's getting constantly updated. Something I bet a lot of you can certainly appreciate. Raid is getting a big update this month that includes new champions, a faction guardian system, and a way to unlock legendary champions that you missed out on. So, now's a better chance than ever to get started. Especially if you follow the link in the description, or use the QR code that has been waiting ever so patiently in the corner for you to use it. Using them will get you the epic hero Chonaru, 200k silver, an XP boost, an energy refill, and an ancient shard to summon the champion when you boot up the game. Once you collect the precious booty, it'll be waiting up here for you to collect. I'd like to thank Raid for supporting my channel. It goes a long way, and I really hope that you guys are able to send that same support back. Okay, let's talk about the Criticola. After being created just one day before, the Criticola was added into the game on April 28, 2010. This means that, to my knowledge, the Criticola is one of, if not the only weapon added in a random patch instead of an update. The Criticola's stats reflected its simple beginnings. When you drank the Criticola, or as I'll be calling it for the rest of the video, the cock. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be calling it that. Anyways, when you drank the Criticola back then, it would grant you 6 seconds of mini crits for all of your weapons at the cost of taking mini crits for 6 seconds from all outside sources. The design was very reminiscent of the Criticola we have today. It was a weapon that rewarded good movement and flanking with bonus damage and punished bad movement and placement. This version of the Criticola could be potentially broken in the hands of a really good scout, but it was balanced enough that it wouldn't have the absolute stigma it has today. See. Even though this version of the Colo was pretty balanced, the Valve team thought it would be a good idea to buff the absolute hell out of it for two years. The Skunt's reign began on June 27, 2012 during the Pyromania update. In the update, they changed the Criticola's effect timer from 6 seconds to 8 seconds. This change made it so you can rampage for an even longer time with guaranteed mini crits, which was potentially busted. But that was nothing compared to the next change. They added a 25% increase in your run speed while active. This was broken as all hell and gets even worse when you realize that the Babyface's blaster would stack with this effect. The Babyface's blaster at this time was busted as well, considering it still had 6 shots in its magazine and was 40% more accurate than the stock scatter gun. It was a very dark time when you could have scouts running at Mach 10 with their scatter gun that dealt no damage falloff and was more accurate. These changes wouldn't last forever though, as the baby faces would receive some balancing adjustments that made it a more fair weapon to fight against. You'd think that nerfing one infamously overpowered scout weapon would mean that they would nerf the other, right? Certainly they would be doing the reasonable thing and they'd buff the absolute shit out of it again. This update removed the mini crit damage taken during the Sodi Pops effect and replaced it with a 25% damage vulnerability. 
This means that using the cola was no longer an equal exchange in a fight. Drinking the cola would give you a direct advantage in a fight. All you needed to win was drink a can of soda. The world was crumbling and the skunts were laughing at the madness. Thankfully, sometime later, Valve did the right thing and BUFFED IT AGAIN! They changed it so you only have a 10% damage vulnerability when using the cola. That difference is so minor compared to the upsides that it's ridiculous. Thankfully, the Critic Cola started getting nerfed for real this time, and the reign of the stunt ended. Over time, the Critic Cola lost the speed boost and damage vulnerability along with the other tweaks, and made it the weapon that it is today. So what stats does the Critic Cola even have today? Well, drinking the Critic Cola does two things. The first is that it makes all damage you deal mini crit for 5 seconds. Scats, bats, short staps, you name it, it will mini crit. Even damage outside your arsenal will mini crit as well. Bobbles launched by the Rap Assassin will mini crit both on impact and on bleed damage. And for you Halloween enjoyers, all spells you launch during this period will also mini crit. Now bonus damage is good and all, but let's talk specifics about mini crits to really put into perspective how powerful they are. Mini crits increase a weapon's damage by 35%, which is a very big bonus. For example, mini crits raise your maximum damage with the scatter gun from 104 at maximum ramp up to 141. This allows you to one-shot light classes with damage to spare. On top of this, mini crits also don't have damage fall off applied to them meaning you deal much more damage at a range. The Criticola is a great flanking item for this reason. Getting the drop on enemies and one-shotting them before they see you is satisfying as heck. And unlike a certain other scout unlock that rewards you for flanking with mini crits, <clears throat> Criticola can still mini crit from all angles and distances. On-demand mini crits makes one of the strongest weapons in the game even stronger and allows you to be an absolute menace to the enemy team from a much wider range than normal. The only thing keeping you from being a bargain bin sniper is random bullet spread, which makes dealing damage at a range a bit more random. The Criticola also excels at getting picks. You can live out your fantasy of being the playground bully by relentlessly picking off medics with the Criticola. It's extremely easy to just drink the cola and snipe a medic to death and run away before the enemies can even catch you. It's ridiculously fun to pull off. This godlike blessing of power isn't just limited to your primary weapons, though. No, no, no. The mini crits also extend to your melee weapons. So, uh, you can use it to me, I guess. I've been talking pretty positively about the cola for a while now, so I think it's time to face the truth. The cola leaves you vulnerable. Like, very vulnerable. Using the Critic Cola is like the law of equivalent exchange. You drink it to gain immense power, but everyone else is immensely powerful against you. After attacking by any means during the Critic Cola's effects, you are marked for death for 5 seconds. This means that any damage you take will be mini crit damage. You have 93 health against every attack from any range. All Criticola players therefore live in crippling fear of the direct hit. And the direct hit isn't even the only thing that demolishes you. You also die fast to scatter guns, miniguns, rockets, pipes, shotguns, sticky bombs, the Natasha, revolvers, the bushwhack of flamethrowers, and sentry guns, which includes mini sentries. Yes, you take extra damage from mini sentries. And those are just the things you have a major disadvantage against. Every other source of damage still mini crits you. This leads to so many scenarios where you shoot someone once and they just turn around and delete you from the universe. For every time you blast away a scout or sniper in one shot, there's a time where a demo man kills you. 
And another downside is that the Cola takes up the spot a pistol or cleaver could have, which means you are sacrificing your secondary damage output or potential healing and relying entirely on your primary and melee, which makes finishing off wounded enemies a chore as you either have to reload a shell which takes valuable time, or whip out your melee and hope for the best. The time you spend waiting for Cola to charge can be infuriating because it feels like you're walking on eggshells to not get sent to the Shadow Realm. So uh, I think it's fair to say that the Criticola turns you into a glass cannon. You're able to put out tons of damage, but you die if someone sneezes on you. So in order to master this soda pop, you're gonna need to do the unthinkable and grow some game sense. What flank routes are the best to take, where and when to drink soda, when to escape, and formulating a plan for that escape were all key elements to getting kills with the Criticola and living. Shocking, I know. Another important aspect of the Criticola that I haven't mentioned till now is the fact that you aren't marked for death until you attack first. If the effect runs out and you haven't attacked at all, you aren't even marked for death. So it's important to make sure that you strike first and strike hard. If you drink the cola and find yourself in a position that you know you can't win, it's seriously easier to just skedaddle out and come back later. That way you don't have to worry about being marked for death. Over the years, the Critical has earned the stigma of being a no-skill crutch item, certainly due to the Dark Ages. But the more I've been thinking about it and using the item myself, I'd like to say it's a Thinking Scout's weapon. It takes a lot of forethought and planning to get use out of the cola, and it's become a lot more of a respectable pick for me. Sure, it's easy to drink it, run into a group, get one kill, and freaking die. But getting long-term actual use from the cola is much harder than I thought going into this video. Or maybe it's the fact that I've been playing nothing but Critical a Scout for weeks and I'm growing a superiority complex. Maybe all this thinking and planning is useless and I should just turn my brain off and drink the cola wherever the hell I want. Weapon synergies and good pairs. This is a, this is a segue. Well, now that y'all know the basics of the cola, let's go over Scout's primaries and melees to know what works best with the cola. Keep in mind, this is all from personal experience. It may be different for you. I think stock is definitely your best all-round option. It has the highest magazine, which means you have a lot more shots to fire off during the cola's effect. And the stock also has the most consistent damage output. It's just a solid option and definitely the one I used the most during the making of this video. Second place goes to the Soda Popper. The Cola helps you get hype really fast, which makes escaping much easier. The Soda Popper also has a faster firing and reloading speed, which lets you pump out an insane amount of damage in a very short amount of time. Not to mention the fact that the Soda Popper lets you complete the ultimate Criticola Connoisseur loadout. Truly someone who appreciates high taste. Not as consistent as stock, but I think it stands out more. Third place goes to the shortstop. Perhaps I've traded the shortstop too harshly in the past, because using this thing with the Criticola was a much better combo than I was expecting. The Cola's mini crits without damage falloff really pairs nicely with the tighter spread of the shortstop, which lets you deal a lot more damage than a scout should be doing at long range. However, when used outside of the Criticola, the shortstop still deals considerably less damage than stock, and leaves you without a secondary option for damage for extended periods of time. The shortstop is a solid pick for the cola, just a more flawed one. Fourth place goes to the Force of Nature. The jump boost of the Force of Nature lets you get to some pretty swifty flanking locations, especially when paired with the Atomizer. On top of this, mini crits with the Force of Nature barely surpass the 150 damage threshold, which means you can one-shot medics at point-blank range. Truly devilish. However, the Force of Nature is the primary with the least amount of sustain with the Cola, with its long reload time and only holding two shells. This means that you only get to have like one or two picks with the mini crits tops, which makes it a pretty underwhelming choice with the Cola despite all the other positives. Fifth place goes to the Babyface's Blaster. The Cola lets you build up boost insanely fast, but you lose it even faster. Combining two weapons that have such high highs and low lows makes you feel like you're jumping from the peak of Mount Everest into the Mariana Trench. More often than not, you're going to be stuck in the lows though, so I'd recommend the other options more. Last place goes to the Backscatter to absolutely no one's surprise. Outside of memeing with a mini crit based loadout, 
Why would you pair a weapon whose only conceivable upside is dealing mini crits while planking with a weapon that rewards planking with mini crits? By pairing the two, they cancel out each other and become totally useless. I'd say you have a bit less variety with your melee choices, as there's only a few I'd recommend using with the cola, so I'll be brief. I'd say the Bashery is your best choice. Bleed damage mini crits, which means you can deal a lot of damage for a scout melee. And despite what you may think, missing with the Basher does not deal extra damage to yourself. However, I didn't use it a ton with the cola because I always kill myself with the Basher like an idiot. Second place goes to Stock. It's consistent and reliable, not much to say here. Also, using the cola with the fish is objectively the best meme with the cola you can do. You cannot convince me otherwise. Third place goes to the Rap Assassin. The Bobble mini crits and the bleed damage mini crits too. But that means your only reliable source of damage is now your primary, so it's not really worth it sometimes. Fourth place goes to the Atomizer. It's great for getting into positions and escaping, but other than that, it's just a worse bat due to the mini crits not stacking. Fifth place goes to the sun on the stick. It's... It's the sun on a stick. Sixth place goes to the sandman. The ball is absolutely useless and doesn't deal enough damage to make the cola worth it. On top of the fact that it reduces your health even further, ugh. Seventh goes to the fan of war. It has the same problem the backscatter has. But at least the Fan War doesn't take up a primary slot and could be used while waiting for it to charge, but it's better off being used solo. Eighth goes to the Candy Cane. I know I've praised this weapon a lot in the past and I still hold the opinion that it's criminally underrated. But for the love of god, why would you mix a damage vulnerability with taking mini crit damage with no fall off? Why would you do that? So to recap, my primaries ranked in order of use with the cola goes Stock, Soda Popper, Short Stop, Force of Nature, the Baby Faces Blaster, and the Backscatter in last. My melees ranked in order of use with the Cola are the Boston Basher, Stock Slash, Holy Mackerel, Rap Assassin, Atomizer, Sun on a Stick, Sandman, Fan of War, and Candy Cane in last. So in short, yeah. The Criticola to me is the only weapon in the game that's simultaneously terrible and overpowered. But by learning its secrets and using the right set of weapons, you can get the two to meet somewhere in the middle. I don't see a world where the Critic Cola can be buffed though. Giving the Cola an inch would let it run a mile. However, I, I wouldn't nerf it either. The Cola is as balanced right now as I think we're ever going to see it. And hey, barely anyone uses this thing anymore anyway, so I guess it's nothing to worry about. If you have another weapon that you think is both bad and good, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to using the Cleaver and Pistol. I don't think I can keep drinking this stuff. I've been finding weird lumps on my tongue and I've been coughing up blood. Plus, the grape flavor kind of tastes like cough medicine. See you later!